In 25 AD, the Han Dynasty was restored to power in China after the collapse of the short-lived Jin Dynasty. The man responsible for this resurgence was Liu Zhu, who took the imperial title of Emperor Guangwu. Born into a family of noble lineage, Liu Zhu was a descendant of the Western Han Dynasty and held a claim to the throne through his ancestry. During the Jin Dynasty, the central authority had weakened and the dynasty faced internal turmoil leading to its eventual downfall. Capitalizing on the discontent and disillusionment with the Jin Dynasty, Liu Zhu rallied support from various factions, including the Red Eyebrows Rebellion, which was a popular uprising against Jin rule. With the backing of these rebels, Liu Zhu's forces clashed with the Jin Dynasty's troops and emerged victorious. After a series of strategic maneuvers and political alliances, Liu Zhu established himself as the new emperor, officially restoring the Han Dynasty. As Emperor Guangwu, he implemented policies aimed at stabilizing the empire and promoting the welfare of its people. He centralized power, re-established the civil service examination system, and encouraged Confucian teachings to govern society. His reign is often seen as a period of renewal and prosperity, known as the Eastern Han Dynasty. Under his leadership, China experienced relative peace and economic growth, and the Han Dynasty once again became a dominant force in East Asia. Emperor Guangwu's reign lasted until his death in AD 57, but his legacy continued for several centuries as the Han Dynasty persisted, even witnessing expansions into neighboring regions. The restoration of the Han Dynasty brought a sense of unity and cultural revival to China, and the impact of this event is still evident in Chinese history and identity to this day. In 1583, English explorer Sir Humphrey Gilbert made a significant step towards establishing a permanent English presence in North America by establishing the first English colony on the shores of present-day St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador. Gilbert, an adventurer and a proponent of English expansion, received a royal charter from Queen Elizabeth granting him permission to colonize and claim lands in the New World. With a small fleet of ships, Gilbert set sail from England in June 1583, determined to establish a settlement and secure territorial claims for the English crown. After facing rough seas and difficult navigation, his fleet reached the eastern coast of North America. On August 5, 1583, he claimed the land for England and established a colony at St. John's, naming it Cooper's Cove. Despite initial enthusiasm, the harsh conditions of the region, limited resources, and conflicts with the local indigenous populations presented significant challenges for the settlers. Gilbert's colony struggled to survive, and he himself faced difficulties in maintaining control and order among the settlers. Tragically, Gilbert's expedition ended in disaster when his flagship, the HMS Squirrel, sank during a storm off the coast of Newfoundland. Gilbert and many of his crew members perished at sea. Although the colony at Cooper's Cove did not endure, Gilbert's efforts marked the beginning of English exploration and colonization in North America. His mission paved the way for future English endeavors in the New World, as well as other European powers seeking to establish colonies and trading posts in the Americas. The English presence in North America would continue to grow, leading to the establishment of successful colonies in later years, such as Jamestown in 1607 and Plymouth in 1620. Gilbert's pioneering efforts set the stage for the expansion of British influence and colonization in the New World, leaving a lasting impact on the history of North America. In 1824, during the Greek War of Independence, a pivotal naval battle took place known as the Battle of Samos. Led by the skilled and daring Greek naval captain Konstantinos Canaris, the Greek fleet achieved a remarkable victory against the combined forces of the Ottoman Empire and Egypt. The Greek War of Independence was a protracted struggle by the Greek people to break free from centuries of Ottoman rule and to establish an independent Greek state. The battle at Samos was a crucial moment in this war as it highlighted the determination and resourcefulness of the Greek forces against formidable adversaries. Canaris, renowned for his audacious tactics and innovative use of fire ships, devised a daring plan to counter the larger and better equipped enemy fleet. As the Ottoman Egyptian Armada approached the island of Samos in the eastern Aegean Sea, Canaris and his fleet launched a surprise attack under the cover of darkness. In a display of strategic brilliance, Canaris and his men navigated their fireships skillfully among the enemy vessels and set them ablaze. The resulting chaos and panic amongst the Ottoman and Egyptian sailors allowed the Greek fleet to inflict significant damage. 
The battle turned into a resounding victory for the Greek side, bolstering their morale and inspiring the wider Greek population in their fight for freedom. Canaris's audacity in using fire ships to devastating effect earned him recognition as a national hero. His tactical prowess and courage made him a symbol of Greek resistance and defiance against the Ottoman Empire's dominance. The Battle of Samos demonstrated the importance of naval power in the Greek War of Independence and highlighted the determination of the Greek people to reclaim their independence. While the war would continue for several more years, the victory at Samos was a turning point that showed the world the determination and tenacity of the Greek forces. Canaris' legacy lives on as a symbol of Greek national pride and as a reminder of the sacrifices made by the Greek people in their struggle for independence. The Battle of Samos remains a significant event in the history of the Greek War of Independence and serves as a testament to the power of resolve and ingenuity in the face of overwhelming odds. August 5, 1884, a symbolic cornerstone-laying ceremony took place on Bedloe's Island, now known as Liberty Island, in New York Harbor, marking the construction of what would become one of the most iconic symbols of freedom and democracy in the world, the Statue of Liberty. Designed by French sculptor Frédéric Auguste Bartholdi, the Statue of Liberty was conceived as a gift from the people of France to the United States to commemorate the centennial of American independence and to celebrate the enduring friendship between the two nations. The colossal statue, with its distinctive neoclassical design, featured the figure of a woman holding a torch in her right hand and a tablet inscribed with the date of the American Declaration of Independence on her left. The statue, officially titled Liberty Enlightening the World, symbolized enlightenment, freedom and democracy, embodying the ideals cherished by both the United States and France. The construction of the statue involved an intricate process of sculpting copper plates and assembling them over an iron framework, resulting in a magnificent structure standing over 305 feet tall, including the pedestal. Bartholdi's work on the statue was met with overwhelming support from the French public, and money was raised through public donations to finance the project. In 1885, the statue's disassembled components were shipped across the Atlantic to New York City. On October 28, 1886, the Statue of Liberty was officially dedicated in a ceremony presided over by U.S. President Grover Cleveland. Since its dedication, the Statue of Liberty has stood as a symbol of hope, freedom and democracy for millions of immigrants arriving in the United States seeking a new life. The statue's location on Liberty Island, visible from Manhattan and other parts of New York City, further solidified its status as a beacon of hope and a welcoming symbol of the American dream. Over the years, the Statue of Liberty has become one of the most recognizable landmarks in the world, drawing millions of visitors annually to witness its grandeur and significance firsthand. It remains an enduring testament to the enduring values of liberty and democracy and stands as a universal symbol of hope and inspiration for people everywhere. In the annals of track and field history, 1901 marked a groundbreaking moment when Irish athlete Peter O'Connor achieved a remarkable feat in the long jump event. Competing in Dublin, O'Connor set the first officially recognized long jump world record of 24 feet 11 and 3 quarter inches. This record-breaking performance witnessed by spectators and fellow athletes catapulted O'Connor to international acclaim and left a lasting mark on the sport of athletics. Peter O'Connor's achievement was not merely a product of chance but the culmination of dedication and training. Born in 1872 in County Wicklow, Ireland, O'Connor had shown early promise as an athlete. His journey to prominence began with success in local competitions before he established himself as a force to be reckoned with on the international stage. In 1900, O'Connor's burgeoning athletic career reached new heights at the Paris Exposition Universelle, where he represented Ireland and Great Britain at the Olympic Games. In the long jump event, he displayed his immense talent, leaving an impressive distance that set a precedent for future jumpers. O'Connor's record-breaking performance in Dublin the following year solidified his position as one of the era's premier long jumpers. His technique, combining speed, power and precise execution, set a benchmark for aspiring athletes and inspired a new generation of long jumpers to strive for excellence. For two decades, from 1901 until 1921, O'Connor's record stood undefeated, a testament to his exceptional ability and dominance in the long jump event. His record-breaking mark demonstrated the potential of human athletic performance and underscored the continuous pursuit of physical excellence in sports. Beyond his athletic achievements, O'Connor's legacy is also intertwined with Irish national pride. 
As a representative of Ireland in international competitions, he became a symbol of the nation's aspirations for independence and recognition on the global stage. In 1906, O'Connor's commitment to his homeland took a notable political turn. During a medal ceremony at the Intercalated Games in Athens, he protested the use of the Union Jack during his victory ceremony and unfurled the Irish flag, making a bold statement about Ireland's identity and right to self-determination. In the years following his record-breaking jump, O'Connor continued to compete and engage in the sporting community, leaving a lasting impact on the development of athletics in Ireland and beyond. His record in the long jump event served as a milestone in the history of track and field and inspired athletes around the world to reach for greatness in their respective disciplines. On August 5, 1960, the West African nation of Burkina Faso, then known as Upper Volta, achieved independence from French colonial rule, marking an historic moment in the country's journey towards self-determination and sovereignty. After decades of French colonization and the struggle for autonomy, Upper Volta successfully broke free from foreign rule and emerged as an independent nation. The path to independence for Upper Volta was not without challenges and sacrifices. Like many African colonies, Upper Volta had been under French control for much of the 19th and 20th centuries, subjected to the exploitive policies of colonial administration. Throughout this period, the people of Upper Volta resisted colonial rule through various means, including political activism and grassroots movements. One of the key figures in the fight for independence was Maurice Yameogo, a charismatic leader who played a pivotal role in steering the country towards self-governance. Yameogo's efforts to garner domestic support and engage in diplomatic negotiations with French authorities were instrumental in paving the way for Upper Volta's independence. Finally, on August 5, 1960, the French government officially granted Upper Volta its independence and Maurice Yameogo became the nation's first president. The people of Upper Volta celebrated their newfound freedom and began the process of nation-building, with hopes for a brighter future characterized by political stability, economic development and social progress. In the early years of independence, Upper Volta faced a host of challenges, including establishing effective governance structures, fostering economic growth and promoting social cohesion among diverse ethnic and cultural groups. President Yameogo's tenure was marked by efforts to consolidate power and address these challenges, but his rule faced criticism for alleged authoritarian tendencies. Subsequent years saw political transitions and social movements in Upper Volta, leading to various changes in government and the rise of different leaders. However, despite these challenges, the people of Burkina Faso demonstrated resilience and determination in their pursuit of a better future for their nation. In 1984, the country underwent a significant change with the adoption of the name Burkina Faso, which means land of honest people in the local languages of Mori and Dayula. The new name reflected the nation's commitment to a new era of self-reliance, cultural identity and inclusive governance. Throughout its post-independence history, Burkina Faso has experienced both achievements and setbacks, navigating the complexities of nation-building and regional dynamics. The country's journey towards democracy, economic development and social progress continues to evolve, with its people remaining resilient and determined in their pursuit of a prosperous and united nation. We hoped you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed creating it for you. If you found the content valuable, here's a quick favor we'd like to ask. First, give this video a big thumbs up and hit that like button. Your likes not only show appreciation for our hard work, but it also helps this video reach more people who might benefit from it. Secondly, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. By subscribing, you'll be the first to know whenever we release new content, ensuring you never miss out on any exciting updates. Also, don't forget to follow us on our social media channels to stay connected beyond YouTube. We love engaging with our community and sharing additional content, behind-the-scenes glimpses, and updates on what's coming up next. And lastly, if you want to take your support to the next level and help us continue creating quality videos, consider joining our Patreon community. By becoming a patron, you'll gain access to exclusive perks and be an integral part of shaping the future of this channel. We genuinely appreciate your support, and it's because of viewers like you that we can keep producing content we're passionate about. So thank you once again for being a part of this journey. Remember to like, subscribe, follow us on social media, and check out our Patreon if you can. Until next time, take care, and we'll see you in the next video.